Welcome to the Uncle Hack Podcast, where dudes pretty much just talk dude shit. Here we go with another episode of the Uncle Hack Podcast. I tell you what, you wait a week, the news comes in. That's all you have to do in this fine, revolving rock, whether it's flat, it's spheric, whatever, it's transphobic, whatever this world is, you wait a week and you get the news that, that, that we can discuss and get to the true root of problems in this world. That's why we're here. All right. Before we start the show, dates coming up uh, April 2nd, this weekend, Vancouver, BC, and next week, the Ontario Tour kicks off April 5th, Chatham, Ontario, April 6th, Sarnia, April 7th, London, April 8th, Brantford, April 12th, Cambridge, April 14th, Guelph, April 15th, Milton, April 19th, Orangeville, April 20th, Owen Sound, April 21st, Collingwood, April 22nd, Barrie, Ontario, April 26th, Peterborough, Ontario, and our last date, April 27th, Belleville, Ontario. Coming off a strong weekend, uh... For the first time prior to the show even being, uh, you know, first joke being told on stage, we sold her out two days out in Edmonton and that felt good. So I have to say thank you to all you fine people that are making my dream come come, uh, come true. Isn't that lovely? A lot of kids, you know, they don't, they don't get uh, a dream even, you know. And here I am, full grown adult, trying to chase one. Isn't that fun? Isn't that nice? Isn't that lovely that one of us oil field kind of blue collar dipshits is stepping outside the miserable life that we were set out to have and attempt ha- to chase this illicit emotion called happiness? Isn't it weird? I don't know if I've completely felt happiness, but I think I'm knocking on the door of it, you know? <laughs> We all, we all can understand that, can't we, you know? To almost fool yourself into thinking that you are happy, you're happy in your marriage, you love your kids, even though, you know, maybe the one might be a little, a little autistic, uh, and then the school system's fucking messing with, it, with your kid's brain. And suddenly, you know, you come home one day and you find out that you're a fascist because, you know, you won't allow the internet to be used past 10 p.m. in your house. But don't worry, it's coming soon that the government will regulate your internet, your internet access. It's happening. And I hate to be Dr. Doom and Gloom, but I'm out here just having trying to have a good time while this uh, this 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 what was once a phenomenal place in the world right a lot of people looked at north america and they're like look at that i want to be there then immigrants get here and they're like this fucking sucks this is stupid i'm working my ass it's not like this on the movies it wasn't like this on the on the fucking propaganda that you sprinkled all through my country you know i i had a belief that it was wonderful over here but apparently it's not we just get shanked in the streets rather than gunned down by a you know, some militia forces fighting a proxy war on the dollar on from the dollars sent over from one of these North American countries or a NATO force. Ah, but that, my friend, you know, too doom and gloom. I'm just trying to enjoy the 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 volcanic ash that that or I preparing myself for the volcanic ash that this society is heading towards, you know. I, I, I like to think that I'm going to have a little fun with it. You know, we might as well. There's no sense, you know, we, the, the, there's no empathy or sympathy anymore. And we like to pretend that we have that. And we're going to get into the first uh, article of the day. I think it's a great way to segue into it. We'll start with the horrific, uh, disturbing news of the day uh, in a city that I just so happen to be heading to. 
Whoa! Scared the shit out of me. What the fuck is going on? Knock it off! That's that's what I'm saying. These ads are getting out of control. Shut it down! What the fuck is this? My God. Anyways, my if that didn't if that scared me. If it scared me, it probably is going to scare you. That's just a little bit that we'll leave in there. Okay, but first off. The city that I'm heading to this weekend, April 2nd, that's right, Vancouver, B.C., just suffered uh, what was a horrific event that took place in the streets, okay? And like I was saying, that uh, we've now gotten to a place where everybody everybody puts out these false emotions that we like to pretend that we care, you know? All across the country, what do you do immediately? There's always somebody on your fucking Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter feed that's trying to make themselves, you know, reaching back, trying to pat themselves on the back. And what do they always do? Oh, I can't believe that this is happening. And it's like, you ask it, can you seriously ask yourself that question? Jeez, Louise, you know, you look at a city like Vancouver and you, and you think to yourself, I can't believe this is happening. That place is a complete shithole, you know? respectively saying but i mean like you have a drug problem a massive drug problem ridden the streets are ridden with homeless people that 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 are you know probably looking for help i imagine that some people if the olive branch was extended but what do they do out there they're like no 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 don't give help what we're gonna do is give you legalized substances that you can abuse still and then on top of it, the people that want to reach back and pat themselves on the back are out there handing you clean needles. So let's f add some fuel to the fire. Nobody really fucking cares, all right? We all want to just do this silly little thing where we, we project ourselves as being a great human being even though back home we're beating our wives to, to, unconscious, to an unconscious state. And... For some reason, hopping on Twitter just uh, after a murder takes place in the middle of the... In broad daylight outside of a Starbucks, which I may add, is probably the most Vancouver way to die. Outside of a Starbucks, broad daylight, stabbed in your own fuck it, you just You're bleeding out in front of people and no one cares, right? Except for the people on Twitter. That's who cares. And now, if they were around, could they have possibly saved that man's life? No, because you, you know what? You got to get the footage. Why would you want to help somebody whose life is at stake when you could have a viral TikTok video? You know what I mean? Don't sit here and give me any of this right now. Don't even act like I'm saying the wrong thing. If you were in that position, okay? If you were in that position and, and you have the opportunity to catch the next video that will go viral across the internet and your shit is shared over a kabillion times, played on the news, you name it, and you get to be a street reporter and get your two seconds of fame because it's no longer 15 minutes, you get like two seconds because, you know, TikTok squished that down. Our, our attention span is lower, so you get two seconds of fame these days. Do you want that? or the possibility of saving another human life. Now we're talking about we can affect millions of lives by putting out this video and they can retweet it, they can put their own little spin on it, they can make memes out of it, all sorts of cool things, right? Or you get the pleasure, which <laughs> let's be honest, is it a pleasure getting of getting another human's blood all over you? You got to listen to their last words, what their wishes are. Tell my wife I love her, and it's like I don't even know who your wife is, sir. You're right now. You're you're really taken away from possibly what what could be my viral moment, and I am I'm putting everything I got into, and you ruined my 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 fucking button down shirt here. I have this nice button-down shirt that I like to wear on weekends, and you're ruining it because, you know, you just couldn't allow somebody to smoke around your kid. So, you're getting a bill in the mail. That or I'm going to have to go through your wallet once you pass away. It's your choice. It's not looking good out here. I'm covered in your blood. We're crying. Your wife's hysteric right now. I got, I got a, it's, you know, this East Indian fella who just shanked you. He's walking around with a, like a madman with a murder weapon in his hand. What do you want me to do? That's the world we live in, folks. <laughs> 
But but thank God the internet exists, right? So that way we could express what we would do in that situation, even though, you know, there was numerous people. It's broad daylight, okay? Man's bleeding out. Numerous people around, given the opportunity to do those things that we love to say on the internet, and no one did jack shit, except for one kid was taking a selfie video. Now that... That makes sense. You got to get your face in the footage or else they'll never know who shot it, right? You got to get your moment. You have to get your moment. A man bleeding out on the street, you have to get that selfie, you know, selfie mode. Look, holy shit, man. Look at this crazy ass shit that's taking place behind me, dude. You got to get your, you got to get your fucking, your script prepped. You never know what's going to happen in those moments. And, and you got to be ready because you might lose your viral moment on the internet all because you want to save another human's life. And that would be a fucking travesty, if you ask me. It's it's a lot of things happening this week. A lot of murder this week. This, this episode's got a lot of bloodshed, okay? We'll get into it. What are, what are the lovely reporters over at Global News have for us today? Oh, now, now, doesn't want to fucking... Now confirming the stab... Breaking news, Vancouver police now confirming the stabbing outside a downtown Starbucks was fatal. It happened last night shortly before 6 o'clock at the corner of Granville and West Pender. 37-year-old Paul Stanley Schmidt was stabbed. He was treated at the scene and rushed to hospital but later died of his injuries. The suspect was arrested at the scene by a VPD constable patrolling in the area at the time. He has been identified as 32-year-old Inderdeep Singh Gozal. Officers... I like how they put the clip in the news, eh? Like... Somebody's checking the front door. Here we go. So, some lady walking up. As 32-year-old oh, the, the door's closed to the, the Starbucks. They put this clip in the news of a woman walking up, checking the door to make sure the Starbucks is over. She's like, yeah, you know, there, this used to be a crime scene 15 minutes ago. So, I mean, like, it's wrapped up. There's no chai lattes uh, being ready to be pressed for me right now. What the fuck is going on here? I thought, I thought this is Canada. What the fuck? <laughs> now, did you get a... The suspect was arrested at the scene by a VPD constable patrolling in the area at the time. He has been identified as 32-year-old Inderdeep Singh Gozal. Officers do not believe the victim and suspect knew each other. However, they are... Oh, that is great. We are so... We are so scared of fucking race. You know, we were talking about this on uh, it, one of the past episodes last week, right? That guy got shot. Remember the guy that was on the Patreon episode? And, and the guy got shot, and he was too scared to tell. Like, they're like, who did it? What was the race of the guy that shot you? And he's like, eh, you know, that doesn't really matter. Dude, and then they're like, Gurdip, you know, an, an Indian name. Let's just, let's call a spade a spade here. An Indian name. East Indian name. Not a fucking photo of them. We are so fucking terrified of race or anything to do with immigration that like, oh, this guy came from where? Oh, boy. Ah, shit. How are we going to cover this? This is not good for our brand. But unfortunately, some dickhead had to film the murder. He had to film the murder and it went viral on every social media platform. So now we're stuck. We have to report on this, obviously. A routine stabbing in Vancouver caught on tape, finally. Oh, shit. You know, I mean, people probably get stabbed in Vancouver. Have you seen the LRT systems these days? It's a fucking, it's a Mad Max endeavor is what it is. It's, it's full on warfare once you get in it. It's like a hardcore match for fuck's sakes. With any weapon, you're allowed to bring any weapon. The LRT system is basically like open waters in in in, in whatever sea you want. There's like international rule. All, everything's a go. All ships of fire. You know what I'm saying? You can you can steal a crutch from a severely handicapped man and bust it over an old woman's head, and it's legal in an LRT system right now. You can do whatever the hell you want. You can whip your dick out. Piss all over yourself, light the person sitting next to you on fire while singing the lyrics to whatever Elton John song you please. And nobody says jack shit. In fact, they don't even film it 
We don't even let it get out to the public. It's like an unwritten rule of this underground fight club that's taking place. All weapons allowed. You leave the, the LRT system with like 19 new injuries you didn't know you needed. You're bleeding from the from the face. Shit's getting serious down there. But but so scared of race these days. We we would much rather everybody kill themselves in in like just the most horrific ways than ever to be like an East Indian man that immigrated from Pakistan murdered somebody. You know, like now whether he has or not, I'm just saying. I'm I'm speculating because that's how fucking scared we are to talk about this kind of stuff. And and like it's almost it's to me it's almost like this is a good thing we need and i don't mean a murder of somebody but like when when, when i say that it it's a good thing actually it, it's horrific it is but when when i say that what i mean is, is like now 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 there's no hiding it like we gotta talk about these types of things you know it's just like yeah well fuck what do you want me to say I'm not saying white guys don't go out there and, and act a fool. Now they're just they're just trans shooting up schools, which we'll talk about later. You know, it, it, a used to be guy or whatever pronouns. You know, like we gotta. There's too many games we gotta play, and then we act like everything's all hunky dory, right? We put a ban on on hunting rifles. We put the ban on hunting rifles. So things are going to, it'll smooth itself up. Vancouver, oh yeah, 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 Vancouver. Don't worry, we legalized heroin. Isn't that what you wanted? We defunded the police and legalized heroin. What more do you want from these fucking politicians and city councilors? Come on, guys, get with the program here. It's fucking embarrassing that nobody understands what, what, what the real problem is, and it's racism. Just because, you know, I get it. There's a lot of white guilt out there in Vancouver. <laughs> Just so terrified to bring up like, oh, the name didn't give it away, right? The name to get away. If, if he, he forgot to like adopt his own white name, you know, like, you know, when you see like uh, uh, an ad in the newspaper, if you still read those, it, 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 grab a newspaper and it's so funny when you when you get like, an ad for a dealership in the local town. And then there, there's always like, fucking, we're not stupid. It's always like Peter Singh, you know what I mean? And you know damn well, like that was just like the white guy name. So that way any old guy that can actually afford to go in and buy a pickup doesn't feel offended by having to go gird deep. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just to make the old white guy feel good. Even though, like, yeah, it's like, uh, you, oh, you're Canadian? Yes. <laughs> See? Wrong language. Anyways, back to the... Still investigating the circumstances that led to the fatal stabbing. They show, like, three people walking up to the front. They don't show the murderer at all. But they show two white women running up to the door. Not running. One, one They're speed walking to the front doors of a fucking Starbucks and it's closed. You know, never mind the murderer who killed the people. Look at these, look at these white people that aren't able to get their lattes because things are out of fucking control. That's what the news want to see. That's what they want you to see is look at this. Look how inconvenienced these white women are. That's how you get change. I like, I like the move that the news is doing here. You know, me, I'm a straight white male. My opinion does not matter. I do this podcast purely for entertainment. I'm not trying to change how the world operates. I'm not trying to change even how you operate. I just do this because it's fun for me. This is a form of entertainment. I don't think that me, as a, as a solo individual, possess any sort of knowledge inside my brain that I can change the way we view the world. I am very well aware of that. I am, in fact, it's it's reminded, I remind myself that, listen, dickhead, you ain't gonna do shit, okay? Go tell your little dick jokes on stage, make sure everybody's having a giggly little time, and carry on your merry little fucking path, asshole. But this, right here, is what we need. We need white women upset. We need them inconvenienced. You know, look at the look on her face. She looks disgusted that she cannot go in there and get a caramel macchiato for her fucking day it, 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 it all went to shit you know this is the one thing 
that $9 coffee that she gets every fucking day that keeps it between the mayo and the mustard, right? Right down the center lane, pal. Fuck, ain't hitting no ditches today. And this lady right here got rejected because some asshole just decided to shank somebody in front of the Starbucks that I like to go to. See, this is where selfishness is good in this scenario. Because if these these white ladies that don't get expensive coffees packed full of sugary fucking horse shit, the world's going to fucking get ugly here in a second. They're loud. They're loud. And they got a way of like never allowing something to be their fault, right? Nothing is ever their fault. I didn't get my coffee today. That's why I was a half an hour late. And then next thing you know, I cheated on you with a hockey, the junior hockey team out here in Barrie, Ontario. They were in town playing the Vancouver Giants. I let them run a train on my ass. And you know what I mean? Just the list of excuses that are down the pipeline from this location being closed because some fucking dickhead just couldn't keep it under control I have a little bit of an altercation no i had to start getting a little stabby thank god those gun laws are in place boy oh boy probably would have been another fucking columbine if that was the case police are now appealing just for pissed any witnesses oh that is so funny watching white women just walk up to a starbucks yeah that you know like <laughs> Jesus fucking hell. Jesus fucking hell. And you wonder why nobody watches the news. It's because when you when you dissect it, I know the news is fun to like sit there and and it's fun to watch as uh as an like an a medium of entertainment, right? You watch it as as you would like a TV series or a movie or a, even a YouTube fucking video for all I give a shit, right? When you watch the news, if it's just like you see it as entertainment, even though these are kind of like real life events, but the shit they sprinkle in there is magical. It's a chef's kiss. Like watching two women walk up to the Starbucks where a man was brutally murdered and the doors are locked and you see the... Uh, that on how inconvenienced they are. This <laughs> fucking my god come forward uh, do i even make sense with that like with the whole white women thing because it, it does make sense to me if you want to make change in the world you just gotta allow white women to feel like they've been uh they've been done wrong like like an in, an instance like this of not getting their nine dollar coffee in the morning it's going to ruin their day, right? Now, now what? Now, now they can start blaming everything, you know? I didn't get fired. And, and, the, and shit rolls downhill, right? And it always falls on the doorstep of anything, anything that has a penis and enjoys the opposite sex and solely that, doesn't use pronouns or none of that shit, finds it all annoying, and it rolls right onto our front doorstep, and now we got a big pile of shit that we got to somehow fucking clean up. But if you touch the shit, you're a transphobe, a racist, a homophobe. And, you, and if you address anything about the shit being on your front fucking door, then you're an even, you're a bigot. All right. You're a bigot. If you say anything about that, you're a fucking bigot. You're an asshole. You should be nailed to a cross and left out in a field for the crows to pick your bones clean. Time for a little ad read. DangerCatShop.com for all your ticket needs that were, uh, the dates that were said earlier. Uh, those dates are those those tickets to those dates are now available at dangercatchshop.com. Click the ticket link and all the dates are right there for you. Uh, merch as well is on the store. You can get a hoodie and t-shirts and flags on there currently. Uh, use the promo code podcast69 for a little uh, merch, ladies and gentlemen. A little merch for you, brothers and sisters. Patreon.com slash DangerKid69. Head on over there for an extra episode of the Uncle Ag Podcast, which you will receive right away. As you're listening to this, there's already an extra episode waiting for you, or you're tired and you're like, fucking, I just want this shit earlier, dude. I want to listen to you earlier in the week. What do I got to do, brother? And it's like, well, fucking head on over to Patreon, dude. I tell you every week that the early episode drops on Tuesday, then you get the uh, extra episode on Thursday. So then you get two podcasts in one week, and this is too much. I'm like, how do I fucking handle all this, Uncle Hack? I don't know. But what you can do, 
head on over to Patreon if you like the show and you want to support the show. A great way is uh, just doing that. Heading over to patreon.com slash dangercat69. It costs you about one beer a month to be a Patreon subscriber, or if you want to be a Danger Dong Patreon subscriber, it'll cost you about two beers. Two beers a month, and you can support my ass uh, continuing down this path of uh, self-destruction and uh, verbal... Uh, diarrhea that takes place every week. Anyways, back to the episode. Vancouver police are giving an update about a fatal stabbing outside of downtown Starbucks. Let's listen in. Oh. Time of day, uh, Sunday evening, there are uh, likely a number of people who saw what happened. Uh, who may not have come forward yet to speak with us. We're appealing for those people to come forward now and speak to our investigators. While we have made an arrest and we have obtained uh, a second degree murder charge based on the evidence that we have at this point in the investigation, we're still working to determine exactly what happened. Uh, in a case like this, um, while we have made an arrest, we're looking for anybody who was in the area who may have seen the initial altercation, who can speak to that, who might be able to help us gather additional evidence. Likewise, we know there were a lot of people in the area who may have had cell phone video, people who had dash cam video uh, that might be able to assist in our investigation. Um, and we're appealing uh, to those people uh, to come forward now. I'll just go over a few of the details about what happened and then I'll take any questions that you have. Uh, approximately 5.40 uh, p.m. Sunday. 5.40 p.m. in the afternoon. Nobody stepped up to the plate to help that this uh, help this man. That in fact, in the video, I imagine most of you have seen the video by now. There is a gentleman in the back corner sipping his coffee, acting as if nothing is happening around him. He won't even look it up. He does. He ignores it. Does not want to put himself in that situation. That's see. This is okay for fucking being real for a second here. Okay, I'll be real for one second. This is what happens when we develop men into being pussies. And I know it's such like a typical conservative take here, right? It's not a hot take to say that maybe we are getting a little soft as a society. It is not a hot take to say that. And it's a very, uh, it's a very common thing that we hear now that this generation is soft and that we don't look out for one another. And it's 100% true. The only time that we want to do that is when we're behind a screen and we have the protection of the four walls of our own home. Even if you, if you can afford one of those these days, you know, inflation's going up, blah, 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 blah. You know, if, if you're homeless, you got to be a little more, you know, selective with your wording. Okay. Anybody can kick in your fucking cardboard box and start beating the fuck out of you if you start throwing some statements on Facebook and the next homeless guy down. Because, you know, in, in North America, our homeless has have technology. They have cell phones, free Wi-Fis available. So they're able to connect and uh, really reach out online. So um, what I'm trying to say here is... We just love sticking our fucking head in the sand when we're in public. You know what I mean? Nobody lends a hand to nobody. Nobody fucking, nobody's looking to pull anybody up. We love to just step over top of those that are in need all the time. You see, unless there's any sort of social gratitude that can be made or so social praise, I should say, any sort of social praise that can take place online, then we're interested in helping one another. That's the only time that we, that when whenever there's like a problem at hand, you know, if, if there's no social praise involved, if we don't get the clicks, if we don't get the likes, it's not really, it's not worth our time. It's not worth our time. And, and, and then there is those people that do exist that will stop and they do lend people a hand. You know, you see it all the time with those fucking videos where some dickhead, you know, some kid, he's low on some likes. So what do you always do? You take 200 bucks of your own money, you go down, you help a homeless guy, you know? You just help, you shove a camera in his face and be like, tell everybody how great I am for coming down here and giving you $200, a brand new pair of shoes and a sack of, sack of weed and a tall boy. So that way, you know, you can ease the pain of being fucked up in a, in a fucking playground at three o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday and nobody's out here to give you a hand but thank God that I felt like I am a good person today and needed to get some content so I, I got off my fat fucking ass took out $200 out of the ATM 
went down, bought you a new pair of shoes, buddy. You should be happy now. You got a fresh new fucking pair of sneakers that you can go walk around and push your shopping cart in. Isn't that nice? Meanwhile, meanwhile, I got I got a pair of six hundred dollar shoes on, and I'm gonna go back to my apartment and upload this to YouTube and make thousands and thousands of dollars off of looking like a great person today in this moment. Cause that's how great of a guy I am. That's how great of a guy I am, you know? But then if, uh, you, you know, if somebody's going to get stabbed in front of me, I'm going to put my head down because God forbid, I don't want that to be me. I don't want that to be me. That would be awful. That'd be horrific if I got stabbed too. I, I fucking, I have a difficult time in this era. I do. I do. I, I feel like there's a lot of people that are like me that are frustrated when they see shit like this. But then there's like, no, you, you have an answer. It's a logical answer. It's just like, hey, maybe we're fucking being pitted against one another. And, and we're so scared to help one another because in a situation like that, white guy gets stabbed. And then what? You go in and beat the fuck out of, out of the stab, old stabber. What do you call a, what do you call somebody just wielding a knife in public a fucking samurai he's over there samurai jacking everybody with a fucking pocket knife and 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 what because you punched out you punched out somebody that's a different race and and it doesn't matter who it is I don't care if you're white asian fucking it could even be a fellow pakistani that punches another pakistani in the face and somehow these fucking retards out in vancouver would spin this to be like well you know there is a form of deep, uh, settled, uh, you know, un unprecedented white guilt inside of that human being to be able to go. And, you know, the white man is dying in front of him and you felt the need to go out there. That's that's systemic racism right there. Meanwhile, you should be celebrated as a fucking hero because there's a maniac out there with a pocket knife just slitting fucking organs r wide open. But God forbid, no, you can't do that. We just stick our fucking head in the sand because we're too scared to be ostracized by society or these online fucking troll groups that, that pop up to make your life miserable because you tried being a decent human being while another person was in desperate need of help to save their life, right? No, but I, I better just say, I'll stand down, Sergeant, and I'm going to sip my expensive coffee in the fucking corner while, while the aroma of of pennies and nickels and drying blood. You know that scent? You know and fucking blood's in the air. You can smell it. it. Smells like fucking wet change. You know? The smell of iron is in the air. It's unsettling, but I'm able to still stomach my coffee. So that's good. That's the positive here. Sunday night, uh, there was uh, an altercation in front of the Starbucks. Uh, what we know is that there were two men uh, who got into first a, a verbal altercation which turned into a physical altercation and resulted in um, uh, one of the men uh, being stabbed um, and suffering fatal injuries as a result of uh, the stab wound uh, that he suffered. Um, a Vancouver police officer, a constable, was patrolling nearby around the time of the stabbing and was flagged over by a bystander. Uh, the officer met, was, was here within seconds of the stabbing, uh, was able to take the suspect uh, into custody. Uh, the victim, who suffered uh, grave uh, stab wounds um, and was gravely injured as a result of this, was given uh, immediate first aid by uh, the VPD officers who arrived on scene. Uh, we attempted life-saving efforts for several minutes uh, prior to the victim being taken to hospital. Sadly, he was pronounced dead at the hospital. Uh, this is an ongoing investigation, although we have made an arrest and we have obtained a second degree murder charge in this case. This is an ongoing investigation and we're continuing to, to seek out anybody who we have not yet spoken to who might be able to. An ongoing investigation, even though there's social media proof of like this guy standing over top of him holding a knife. But this, like, we got to make sure, you know, this is a fucking like Scoob. We don't know if he was the guy, Scoob. Old man McGinty was beneath the Pakistani man's mask. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, help us <coughs> understand the totality of the circumstances here, understand everything that occurred. In cases like this, it's quite common when there are a lot of people in the area, a lot of bystanders. Um, people don't necessarily know what they've seen until, until after the fact. So um, what we're trying to fully understand is what were the circumstances that led up to this confrontation? Uh, what were some of the events that transpired? We believe there may be people 
who have additional information that could help us with that. Good. Yeah, at, at this point, uh, we believe these were strangers. Um, they did not know each other and had no prior interaction uh, before uh, the interaction that occurred uh, on the patio here of the Starbucks. Don't know. Or sorry, not, not information that we're able to uh, release at this point. The suspect has been charged. Was he known to police? Uh, neither the suspect nor the victim have a significant uh, history with police. Um, but I'd refer you to the court registry to, to take a, a, a detailed look at any uh, any uh, criminal history. Cer certainly, uh, certainly, listen, nothing, um, nothing relative to this this level of offense. Um, I don't have the most recent residency of e of the victim or of this or of the suspect. Um, uh oh. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Have they been a resident in Vancouver for quite some time? Oh, fuck. Oh, no, 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 no. God, I hate the media. Jesus Christ. Oh, no, God. Fucking, why is Rebel News here? You know what? <laughs> Do the old fucking bait and switch on them. There you have it. First article of the fucking day. That's how we're warming up this episode, ladies and gentlemen. That's how we do it on the Uncle Hack podcast because you know what? Racism is a fucking problem. It's a massive problem. And uh, it's not only just, you know, it's not only just in, it's not just face to face where it's an issue, okay? This is, this is fucking, it's too much, okay? It's way too much. You know, we got way too much at stake here. People have to have an understanding of, like, how wrong they are. And I'm talking to you crackers out there, you honkies. CNN reports this. What's digital blackface and why is it wrong when white people use it? By John Blake, a CNN reporter. Maybe you shared that viral video of Kimberly Sweet Brown Wilkins telling a reporter after narrowly escaping an apartment fire, ain't nobody got time for that. Perhaps you posted that meme of supermodel Tyra Banks exploding in anger on America's Next Top Model. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. Or maybe you simply used popular gifts such as the one of NBA great Jor Michael Jordan crying or drag queen RuPaul declaring, girl... If you're black and you've shared such images online, you get a pass. But if you're white, you may have inadvertently perpetuated one of the most insidious forms of contemporary racism. You may be wearing digital blackface. What is digital blackface? This is what we've come to, folks. This is where we're at, okay? every The pat on the back is back, baby, and it's back in black. Digital blackface is a practice where white people co-opt online expressions fuck, of black imagery, slang, catchphrases, or culture to convey comic relief or express emotions. Express, express emotions. These expressions, what one commenter calls racialized reactions, are mainstays in Twitter feeds, TikTok videos, and Instagram reels, and are among the most popular internet memes. Digital blackface involves white people playing, acting at bl uh, being black, saying Lauren Michael Michelle Jackson, an author and cultural critic, in an essay for Team Vogue. Ugh. Jackson says the internet thrives on white people laughing at exaggerated displays of blackness, reflecting a tendency among some to see black people as w a walking hyperbole. <laughs> God almighty. I can't. I can't. You know what I mean? Like, you just want to do something funny. And there's a, a there's a fleet of these fucking losers that, again, we're back to patting ourselves on the back. Uh, this is just another form of trying to do something for social currency. I wonder if, like, you know how many times I imagine that this happens where some fucking dipshit writes an article like this and then black people are just like, give it a rest. Stop using us as your little fucking way to try and make yourself look like a better human being. We fucking do not like you. We never will like you, you know? You, you, you sit there and you try to be our friend by doing shit like this, but in, in reality, you make it fucking worse. 
you make it worse by by <laughs> trying to express that white people are horrible and I'm great because I wrote something like this. So this will help, uh, you know, cure the problem that we we continue to just like remodel and for like mold this into something that that will make us more for this, this, this almost like trying to spread the 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 sea of race and to keep like oh white people gotta be over here don't do anything that could be funny you know don't do anything that can make someone laugh especially if it's at at the expense of a gift that you share and it has somebody of a different ethnic background than you you honkies got your own, okay? Show a fucking, show the clip of Derek Vineyard from American History X doing the curb stomp. That's what you need to be sharing, you racist piece of shit. Get a quote from David Duke and tweet it on, on, your, on your public forum, all right? Go on Reddit and express to everybody how much you applaud the work of somebody like, uh, uh, fuck, what's his name? Shit, I can't think of that asshole that was in Charlottesville that was leading the charge with all the tiki tour. Richard Spencer, there it is. You, you need to be sharing gifts of Richard Spencer, you sons of bitches. God forbid you can't share nothing. Even if you are a RuPaul fan, even if you are a fan of RuPaul's Drag Race, or even if you are a basketball fan who uh, enjoyed the career of Michael Jordan because he was a great athlete, you, my friend, are, are, are constantly pushing racism upon people by doing digital blackface. Trudeau is losing it right now. He's like, finally, I, 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 I don't have to entirely paint my face. I don't have to paint my whole face. Do you know how much money it costs the Canadian taxpayer for me to cover myself head to toe in, in, in some sort of, you know, shoe polish or, or, or fucking body paint. And I don't like to get the cheap stuff from Halloween Alley. No, no, no. I get the top shelf shit that makes me look like, you know, you, you have to second guess. If it wasn't for, you know, uh, specific like bone structure and facial features, you'd have a difficult time. You know, let's be, th th that's where I get in trouble. That's where I get in trouble, you know. That's where that's where I fuck up right there is by by saying some shit like that, and the next thing you know, they come at me. And but meanwhile, I'm just trying to make a little fucking riff here. You imagine Big Trudy just sitting there and being like, "The time has come, ladies and gentlemen. I present to you a folder that I have had for many years of all my favorite gifts, memes, short internet clips." clips from television shows that, that 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 can be used to express emotion in in the comment section and i'm about to unleash hell you thought you thought the photos from arabian nights were bad <laughs> it's about to look like fucking turkey after an earthquake in here ladies and gentlemen it's about to look like fucking the borders of fucking Ukraine where the Russian invasion is taking place. We are fucking about to explode with nothing but digital blackface all across the Canadian internet shortly before I shut it all the fuck down. And you can't do jack shit about it. Oh, God. It's <laughs> defining... Digital blackface isn't easy. My God. Someone. You know what? Someone. No, we ain't going there. We are not going there. We're not going there today. I can't. I can't fathom myself getting to there. Because you know what? I'll end up like this. This is, this is something, Okay. We're going to move on from that before I get myself in trouble. Before I get clipped up and I'm in trouble. Because there might be somebody, there just might be somebody out of like the, the couple thousand people that, that give a shit about this podcast, right? 
Somebody might be out there just trying to sift around and be like, what can I be mad about today? Come to this podcast. And I don't say, like, I, I don't give a fuck about cancel culture. I don't give a fuck, right? But just for the sake of my peace, I'm finally at a place where I'm a little more peaceful in life. I come out here and I get this out. I get all this out. Verbal diarrhea of just like reading something and reacting in real time, okay? And uh, that, that'll be the death of me in the future. That'll be where my career just takes a fucking nosedive is like once this, it, once, if this podcast even grabs a gear and, and gets a few thousand views on it, if that happens then maybe we can have this conversation. But I'm just preparing myself for the future just in case it does happen, you know? But uh, the New York Times tweets this out. This is what I mean. Like, like we're, we're terrified of uh, words more than we are weapons, especially in America. The New York Times tweets this. There was confusion later on Monday about the gender identity of the assailant in Nashville, uh, in the Nashville shooting. Officials had used she and her to refer to the uh, suspect, who, according to social media posts and a LinkedIn profile, appeared to identify as a man in recent months. The parody that is coming out of this fucking world. You know what? School shootings aren't sexy anymore. They aren't. They're not popular anymore. They get sloughed over and be like, we need some blood. Like, we need horrific scenes for this to even, like, eh, consider touching the news. But now this, and now there's a, it's school shootings with a new twist. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like when country music and hip hop blended together and we're like, whoa, we didn't know if we liked it or not. We were on edge. We're like, whoa, I don't know what to do. Hip hop? You know what I'm talking about? Like, hip hop, that type of shit. When you blend two cultures together. Because this used to be like kind of like a militia style, uh, almost like anarchist, maybe like libertarianism. That was like something, you know, like the, the Columbine shooters that I, I believe they were anarchists. This, this, this form of like domestic terrorism that was taking place in America was always performed by uh, people that opposed big government where now it's shifted. It's something new we can get behind where, cause like terrorism in the 2000s, that's was like, that was the height of it. I don't know how old all you guys are, but remember when 9-11 hit, terrorism was everywhere. You fucking, dude, I was in a small town in Tabor, like Ta Tabor, Alberta, a town of 7,000 fucking people, right? And in my head, you know, the Taliban could be anywhere. They could be anywhere. They're probably in the park behind my place because Tabor, Alberta is the place that they need to bomb. And terrorism, everywhere you turn on the TV, the newspapers, the fucking magazines, you go in the grocery store and, you know, you, there used to be a magazine shelf, right? And what did it have? Terrorism, the war on terrorism, you know, the invasion of Iraq. That was everywhere. So it terrified the hell of, uh, out of us. And then when domestic terrorism took place, it was like, uh, it was an attack on the government, right? So the government has to respond. Well, right now, this, this sloughs it off from the government a little bit, a little bit, okay? A little bit. And it puts it on the backs of almost uh, Christians or, or what, what we like to refer to now as bigots, right? And, and it's usually... There's language attached to it, like uh, this guy was a Trump voter, or uh, he attended the January 6th rally. Uh, you know, there's like a, an attack on them. These these are fascists. You know, like this shooter went into a Christian school as a trans and started shooting the joint up. So now it's a new flavor. We're getting a new flavor, like hip uh, hick hop, right? It's not just rap music anymore. Now it's like we're rapping about the back country. And that's like a form of this. It's taken school shootings and made it fucking trendy. Now we can get behind this because there's shootings that happen in the States all the time. And if people, if there isn't like more than nine people that drop from either injuries or death, eh, we're not really that interested. It's got to be like, we, we got to really sell it. Okay. Nine people. That's it. Not even double digits. Ugh. Not even worth our fucking time rolling the tape on the evening news. But now, now that shit like this, that they get to report shit like this. Actually, we uh, mispronounced the, the active shooter that was inside the school. So we'd like to come out and formally apologize to that individual. 
it, it's got it's a Looney Tune world right now. It's just, it's fucking out of control. That the, how does this happen? <laughs> Who gives a fuck? Dude, woman, don't matter. Jacked up on testosterone, overdid it on uh, estrogen. Who gives a shit? Who gives it? Why? <laughs> that, but, but I get it now because it's sexy to report. It's nice to get in the news. Now this shit goes viral. That's what we want. We want clicks, baby. Because we got advertising to sell. Nobody's just clicking like nine shot at the local Walmart. No, no, no. Trans student walks into tra Christian fascist high school unloading rounds to where <laughs> fascist officials come out and mispronoun the individual behind the shootings. Now, now that's a headline. That's a good headline right there. That that excites the folks. That's what gets us going. And now we have something to argue about. Because like before, it was just like, oh, terrorism, terrorism, terrorism. These guys are, are a form of fucking an active form of domestic terrorism, and we don't know how to control it. Where this right here is just it's marketable. You know what I mean? The people can get behind it. There's arguments that that they're about to take. This is going to cause trans students to look. You know, people are going to be scared of us even more. And now there's activism to be had. There's merch to be sold. You know, this is good. This is good for the local economy. All right. This is good. To, the inflation's hitting right now. It's good for the local economy to get behind. We can sell mugs, T-shirts, bumper stickers on both sides, left, right, don't matter. Whatever you get behind, you get, you know, maybe they add like an AR-15 to the rainbow flag. Uh, militias can form and, 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 and like now they got something to fight against. There's an active form of like, you know, we got to we got to defend ourselves against trannies and that'll rile up that, that side and then the trannies get to come back and be like, there's an attack on us and, and play victim. And then and now it's a, it's a fucking verbal chess match. And usually the right wing guys are always quick to be like, fuck you. You know, you like what the left would deem offensive language. And that's a form of violence over here. But these guys want to get violent. You know, they want to be in there in the, in the schools and having a full on fucking like call of duty, modern warfare style battle going on. But but you don't get that. So now you got to take to the streets and and uh, these, 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 these fucking trannies out here. Are, it's an ongoing battle. But, but the main thing is we get to start producing merch. Some t-shirt sales are going to go up. Bumper stickers. You know what I mean? Gun sales are going to go up because now we got to be scared of the trannies. Because they're they're gun wielding now and they're 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 anti-Christian. So if you go to a Christian school, you gotta be on you gotta be on high alert if a fucking, you know, whatever 18 color flag is coming down the fucking road in a Jeep Cher Cherokee or whatever they're fucking driving or a city bus pass or borrowing fucking grandma's car so they can get to the high school and get into, you know, some some fucking real life modern warfare. My God, they had to make that official too, eh? That they had to come out and because God forbid, you know, God forbid, bunch of kids got gunned down in a school. But fucking the main issue here is we came out and we released the wrong statement. Released the wrong statement. That's the world we're living in, people. That's that's what the officials are coming out and being like. Well, we got to apologize. <laughs> Oh my God. It's getting nuts. It's getting fucking, you know what? We like to say that the fabric of North America is being ripped and torn. And, and it's like, Nate, listen, this, this fucking fabric that you, that we speak of has been used as a cum rag for the past 25 years, 30 years, if you will. Okay. Ever since I've been alive, it's been slowly fucking decaying and decaying and decaying. And now we're left with like just like a, a, a fucking just a tiny piece of a fucking jizz sock, you know, and, and we hold that up and be like, look at the fabric of Canada, the fabric of America. And we love to the officials love to weigh that around. You know, politicians like to wave that that dirty piss stained piece of cum fucking fabric in front of your eyeballs and just be like, look, this is what's happening. And then they come out and make statements like that. And, 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 and 
I don't know how we can't just as people, as people, just take a step back and be like, you know what, maybe this is a little absurd. Some of this is absurd. We live in a free part of the world where we can allow ourselves to change our genders if we want. But then people just feel the need to, instead of just like taking your inch and then that's it, we always got to overstep our boundaries and, and try to interfere with other people's lives. And it's like, well, if you don't come and let your kids be fucking mutilated by the government, then you're a bigot. And then we get over here and it's like, if the government fucking... And I'm tired of that. And it's like, we all just can't take a step back. And, and the people in the middle now are, are in a game of tug of war between these two fucking sides that are filled to the brim with maniacs. And, and they're trying to pull you over because there's a, 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 a culture war that's taking place and they need more people. So it's like a recruitment process. You're like that you're constantly going through that, that you make an opinion on something and then that pushes you over here, but then you say something else and then they push you away and, it, and you can't just like have a conversation with anybody. You got to pick teams. There's always a fucking sweater that you got to put on. And then if you put on that sweater and then they don't put a, a pride flag on it one year or one day out of the year, then all of a sudden you're a fucking asshole. You're a dickhead because you don't want to participate in that game. You don't want to play any of that politics stuff or, you, or your religious beliefs are, are stronger than it is on, on taking part in, in this. So then that makes you an evil piece of shit. So now that, that furthers the left then to come out and be like, well, see, it's Catholics and Christians that are making it hard for us because, you know, the Christians are out and be like, look, God can save you from being a freak show out in the street. But meanwhile, you got the freak shows over here. And they're 18, 19 different colors, the neon colors out in the street, listening to Katy Perry on blast through a fucking jbl speaker dancing to traffic and it's just more noise and you get even more annoyed and you want to yell at both of them to shut the fuck up but you can't do that ladies and gentlemen another portion of the greatest uh, segment in podcast history hate mail we got a little hate mail coming up for you today if you have any hate mail please message it to me we're talking like Anything that you need to get off your chest, I'm all for it. I'll read it word for word. It doesn't bother me. It is what it is. You know, some people are just a little angry out there, and and, and that's okay. We're seeing it in the streets, you know? People are stabbing each other in front of uh, uh, fucking Starbucks. White women are upset that they can't go in and get a caramel macchiato. Trans kids are shooting up Christian schools. We're angry. So... To get that anger out of your system, you just email this show, and then we read out your hate mail. Uncle Hack at DangerCats.tv, subject line, hate mail, and we read it out on this show. Because that, we're trying to... You know what? I, I At the beginning of the episode, I did say that I'm not trying to make change. You know, the change that I am trying to make, it, it might not just be working. But I think that maybe this could be just a little bit of a a form of uh, what what people are going through. We get a little bit of an understanding of like how we can change things anyways. Our first piece of hate mail today. Hey, hack, fuck you. Anyhow, I'm the best man at my buddy's wedding in a few hours and got to get up and give a little speech. Send your thoughts, uh, T-H-O-T-S, and prayers. I can keep it under control with the cold snacks till that point. Should be a good old Kansas throwdown with the way, with way too much beer and loose women. I'll have a few for you since you're a pussy now and don't throw down like you should. Later, faggot. All right. Thank you for that. Thank you for updating me on your weekend, sir. That was very kind of you. Very, very kind of you. We appreciate you writing into the show. Here we go. Another piece of hate mail for what's up, hack, you simple bitch. Ha ha. Just kidding. Love the fucking podcast. Great way to start the day. It's the prairie cat again. What can I say? I like to bitch about random shit. Here's my red line rant today. I've been riding motorcycles for over 10 years now, and this absolutely chaps my ass beyond belief. How the fuck are dudes allowed to wear turbans while, while riding motorcycles in Canada? It's a $300 fine if I get caught without my skid lid, but for them, it's okay. Like, what in the actual fuck, hack? I talked to a cop on the street while I was 
half in the bag and their answer was it's their religion well that's fine with me but then you shouldn't be allowed to ride a motorcycle here if you can't wear proper gear like everyone else has to do i'll i'd gladly ride with a ball cap but i'm not allowed to uh, but i'm not allowed for fuck's sakes how does religious belief trump the law even the law agree even the cop agreed but couldn't give me an answer where is the line drawn oh no sorry officer i always ride shirtless with a nose full of government grade cocaine up the nose and a ball cap it's part of my beliefs it makes me highly alert lol fuck sakes i don't get it anyways thanks for reading my shit cheers hack you know what'd be great is uh I don't know if you've uh, heard of the the religion that's the 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 flying spaghetti monster, and they wear like fucking strainers on their head. You should do that one time and just make a mockery. See, this is what this is. Instead of getting mad, you got to make a mockery of it. Okay, you go and you create a religion where it's just an outrageous uh, artifact or something that you would wear. And and, and and you just create this religion. That's exactly what these guys did. The flying spaghetti monster. Just to show the, the, the absurdity between laws and religion. And, and how as soon as you bring religion into it, like your beliefs and all that, that the law just kind of goes away. You don't have to follow it no more. So I would suggest creating your own religion and uh, taking the necessary steps... I think you only need like four people to have a religion, you know, just to back you up and to make a mockery of the system. That's what we got to start doing here, folks. We got, you know, I like the hate mail portion of it. It gets it on. It gets us talking about these types of things and what we can do to further ourselves in in the form of laughter and mockery of, of the current regimes and past regimes even as well. And in creating your own religion so you can bypass laws is a wonderful fucking idea. You know? Think of all the things you, you could get away with. You, you, if you created your own religion and your uh, headwear or headdress or whatever the fuck you want to call it is a specific ball cap, then you get to wear your religious... Uh, Poor shit. I don't fucking know. Shit tuckers me out. So I, that's the advice that I got for you on that. Make a mockery. Have some fun. Hey, get out there, say. Make something out of yourself. All right, our final piece of hate mail for the episode. Hey, Uncle. <laughs> hey, Uncle Hack. Long time listener, first time writer. Ah, I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Long time listener, first time caller, Bob. I got a bit of a story for you and the boys. I recently found out my girlfriend of three years was cheating on me the entire time. Luckily, ooh, luckily the house is in my name, so I kicked that bitch to the curb and kept the dog. She came by to pick up the last few things and bit me on my arm. She was so stupid, she called the cops on herself and got herself charged with domestic assault. <laughs> now I'm seeing the ex of one of the guys she was fucking... <laughs> what the hell it started as some petty revenge but we ended up getting along pretty well haha <laughs> in the end the only person that got fucked from every angle was the ex life couldn't get be any better with that bitch gone cheers hack see you in belleville fucker isn't that <laughs> so we like to hear about the boys winning like that the fellas are back on top okay yeah okay you see it's taken us a while with like this uh, warfare. See, women play this warfare where they use the system against us, where we just got to, you know, I think they call it gaslighting, you know, by just showing them how wrong they are, by, 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 by making chess moves like this, right? So now you went and took down the axe. Now that guy might be like, oh, how's my sloppy seconds? And you can just be like, actually fabulous. Way better than that crazy bitch. That's great, you know. I'm glad that you got a fucker. Now I'm fucking your ex. So it looks like we did the old uh, wife swap. And it turned out better. It turned out even way better than what I intended for. I was just looking for some side pussy, but this chick's actually kind of cool. She was down to be like, you know, she was she she seen what I was up to and, and thought like, hey, I can get behind this. Okay, fuck. Let's play a little. You want to play a game? 
one of those types of scenarios. But good for you. I'm glad. I like it when I hear stories of revenge coming back and it and the revenge was sweet and it's it's got like this sugary nectar to it and you get to feel good about the decision that you made and then even better, you got some pussy out of it and then maybe even just somebody that's down to let you be the dude that you were meant to be. And I'm all for that, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Uncle Hack Podcast and we will see you next Thursday, 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time unless you're a Patreon subscriber then you heard this uh, episode already earlier this week, Tuesday. We release this episode uh, as an early episode. And, and if you want to continue listening to the Uncle Egg podcast, we'll swing on over to the Patreon. There's an extra episode waiting for you right now. Anyways, gotta go.